and welcome back to thecrochetcrowd.com. I'm your host, Mikey, and in keeping in the trend of the corner to corner, let's explore another way of doing corner to corners with doing diamonds. And for example, you may be bored with the whole corner to corner concept where you go one thing and then you go all the way to the other, bada boom, bada bing, you're done. What about if you divided them into miniature squares and still did the corner to corner, but in actual fact, when you go to finish, you put them together so that they form interestingly diamond shapes on top of your pattern. It's a really cool concept and very easy to do. And I'm gonna take you through some of the tips on what I learned when making this particular afghan. Okay, today's yarn that I used was the James C. Brett Flutterby and it, it's exceptionally soft. It's like crocheting with clouds, really easy. Because of this stitch is um, really easy to maintain, you can do this stitch uh, with using this fluffy yarn without any difficulties. And I think even somebody that's even a beginner can be able to do this particular pattern as well. So when I was looking at this pattern, I thought to myself, wow, I'm gonna have to know nine different square patterns in order to make this work. So I was drawing on the patterns and in the more information of this video, you'll notice that I would have put notes on top of the pictures and lines to just show you exactly how one of these work. Once I drew my lines, I realized that each one of these are absolutely identical to each other. So it doesn't matter, for example, on how you crochet it, it's how they're turned is what makes the huge difference. So you can see this is the same and this is the same. But what I want to watch for is what is in the center. So you can see that this does not match. So you have all the whites here. There's a, um, a yellow there. So if I turn it again, you'll see that it's pink. Again, that doesn't match. Again, there is a yellow. And then once you get it around the right way, you'll see that all the whites line up together. So what happens on this side is that if this side is matching each other, these two will be in line and so it's just a matter of putting your neighbors together and then having everything work out to be proper. So in actual fact, once they're all squished together and you do your whip stitching, you'll notice that they're be really amazing. So I really wanted to show you how this was done before putting it together so that you understood that basically it's how you turn these in order to make it work. And that is what makes this afghan quite exceptional. When doing this particular pattern, I always start off with the same colors in order to make sure that I'm doing each one of the squares properly. If you decide to deviate, you're gonna have one square where the striping is gonna be off if you don't do that same concept. So I always started off with the pink and you will notice in the more information of this video that I put some pictures and you will notice that I put a number. So there's two, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, and two. And why do I remember that? A, because I'm looking at it and I've already done the homework but you will notice that everything is pretty much consistent so the corners will always have two rows so that's what that is so two rows you will always have just one row of this individual striping in between you won't use as much yarn for this individual striping through the whole thing and then basically once you get past the first striping it becomes a row of three 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 and all the way to the end what I also noticed too is that there was seven particular single lines Okay, these are yellow lines here, there's seven. The fourth is always directly in the middle. So the fourth is always the widest part. So essentially once you get this part here, this one it goes in, you immediately start decreasing on the other side of that to start coming in. And I always found with myself is that with the corner to corner and why it's so addictive is that once you get to the halfway point, you know that you're gonna get faster and faster and that finishing it is pretty easy. Now when it comes to the whip stitching of putting these together, you'll notice that you'll have different colors on the sides here. And so essentially you don't want to put a border around each one of these because once you do that, then you lose the effect of the, of the seamless look that it will give. So what you're going to want to do is use a color of thread that will really blend and I would use a thinner yarn. I would not use the same yarn to bring everything together. I would use a much thinner and do it nice and tight and essentially you just match the colors together. So the pinks will then come together and then you know the whites and so. So you want to use a nice thin yarn. Make it nice and tight so that you don't have any odd colors that appear out of place when this is going together and then after that you just circle around a few times to do your border and bada boom bada bing this would be complete. So without further ado let's go down to the studio I'm going to show you the how to do the corner to corner concept I'm not going to do the entire square with you but I'm going to get you started show you some tips uh, of changing color and then showing you how to decrease and how to finish off. So here's a closer up version of this square and you can see 
relatively simple. If you're a corner to corner master, you will understand this in no time at all. And essentially, you're always going to want to start off each square identically to each other. So don't start off and like just don't randomly do it. Make sure that you stay in sequence because these are not identical. They're not a mirror image on the middle. You have one color one side, one color on the other side of the center. So if you're randomly mixing your colors, they will not line up when they sit next to their neighbor. So when we look at squares, we always tend to look at them from a horizontal perspective like this. And essentially what I want you to do is get that out of your brain and look at it as if it was a flying kite. And so you're going to start off with the center in the middle just like so and we're going to get bigger and bigger and we're going to shoot our way outward and then each row is going to get longer and longer until we hit the middle point of the middle striping. Now in the more information of this video I, I would have told you that there's photography and basically you can look at these and I've labeled up what things are. Once you get to the middle everything starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So essentially once that's why this is really uh, quite viral is that you take your time getting out but then once you get to the middle it just gets quicker and quicker and quicker. So essentially what you could look at it too from another perspective is look at it as like stairs. So we're starting off and essentially what's happening here is that you're working your way up a set up and down a set of stairs if you prefer to look at it that way. So because these are working in rows and you're turning your work as you go, you will notice that really it doesn't really matter which side that you turn them on. But when you go to put them all together, just be consistent and make sure that it does look Okay, so without further ado, we are using James C. Brett, and this is uh, Chunky. Okay, this is called Flutterby, and this is meant for a baby. You can see a really up close look for it. Now, just for my peace of mind, is that I used a size G or a five and a half millimeter crochet hook today, and I did that so that a baby's fingers really couldn't get through here very easily. They can, but it's not as dramatic as it could be if it was too lacy. So a lot of parents get really upset about that. So just make sure that you can substitute your hook and your yarn to make it as tight or as loose as you want to. So without further ado, let's start off right now. If you're a corner to corner fan, you probably know how to do these already, but this is just a reminder and I'm going to be starting as if you don't know how to do it. So we're going to start off with a slip knot and we're just going to create that. So to do a slip knot if you're that new is that you wrap it around your finger twice. This is the back of your hand forward. You take it the back and just sit it over in front of the forward and then take the new back one and up and over just like so and insert your hook in. Okay, and let's pull that snug. Don't pull it too tight, but just pull it snug. So I'm going to be showing you tips on trying to reduce how to count, how to count on this. So what I want you to do is that we have to chain six, but wait. What I want you to do is this. I want you to chain one, two, and three, and pinch that third one. Then go four, five, and six. The reason why I had you do that is that we're going to double crochet and right where you're pinching is the first stitch. So I don't have to count backwards. I have to count to the fourth to start, but why bother? Just pinch it and then just move your hand and just insert the hook for a double crochet like so. And we need to do two more double crochets. So just along that same chain. So we got one which is the next one. Okay. And then we have to do one more which is the final of this chain. Every box, I call them boxes, but every group of stitches for the uh, corner to corner will always consist of four. So you have one, two, three, and four. And that begins. So we're going to just turn our work and we're going to start the next uh, row next. Turning the row is the most confusing part for people. So this watch, it's now, I haven't turned it yet so I'm about to turn. So I'm going to flip it like so. And what I want you to do is that I want you to chain six. Remember what I just did before. It, when we're growing and every time we're growing on either side we always have to chain six because we have to compensate to make it bigger. So let's uh, begin and I'm going to go one, two, and three, pinch. Okay, and then four, five, and six. And you're going to double crochet right where you're pinching. And that is your first stitch or it's the fourth chain from the hook. Double crochet and you have two more double crochets to do in the same chain to get yourself back to that box formation that is right here. So I have one more to do. Like so. So here's the trick. 
okay? I want you to make sure that this box, that this string is hanging straight down like a diamond shape but it's like the top of a kite. Okay, this is the kite, here's the string that's on the end of the kite blowing in the wind. What I want you to do is that I want you, this here, up here, I want you to bend it upward. So just bend upward and I want you to insert your hook in between the posts, the last section here and through. Grab the yarn and pull through and through. That was the slip stitch. So now what we have to do is that we have to begin and finish off. So we're down like this. So we basically can see a box here, we see a box here but we do not have a box over here that we have to grow. So we have to chain three. One, two and three and simply in that same gapping space we are going to put three double crochets. So this is why fans really like this particular afghan because it's really simple. You don't have a lot of fine stitching. You're just going to play within the gaps of your work. So now to keep with this pattern is that we're going to change color now to the stripe. So we're always going to start off with two. So this is row one and two. Look at it from a diagonal point of view and you will understand that and now we're going to fasten this off. To fasten this off what I did for myself to make it easier so you don't have a lot of loose hems hanging out is that I just trimmed it and I'm just going to wrap it around the hook and pull through everything. So what I want you to do as well now is that I want you to insert your hook into the top stitch there and just weave it in and out of a few of the stitches so that you're bringing that loose end back to the first corner. It makes it really well hidden once we begin. You, the once you have that, don't trim this yet because you're going to want to remember where this is because you want to make sure you stay in balance and not accidentally turn it the wrong way. So let's uh, get your next yarn and I'll be right back. I'm going to bring on my yellow so I'm just going to leave a little bit of a longer tail and I'm going to form a slip knot. Okay? And pull it onto the hook. So I want to pull the work back up and this is where I finished off. And so this is the side that I want to start on. So I got to turn it. So this is coming out this way. And I want to insert my hook into the top of the third chain that we started off with. Okay, this is probably a double crochet at this point. So it's just the top and I want you to pull through. So just like fastening it on. We're not going to worry about this, uh, this yarn yet but what I want you to do is that we're still growing bigger. So every time we grow bigger what do we have to do? We have to chain six. So here's the tip again. So one, two and three. Pinch, four, five and six. So right where I'm pinching is where I'm going to double crochet first. Okay and that's the fourth chain from the hook. And I'm just going to double crochet two more times. So you have a total of three double crochets working in that chain that you just grew. Okay. So the trick is at this point is to make sure that you bend everything up. So what we want to do is that just lay this on top. You have your pink there and what you want to do is just bend it upward like this and insert your hook into the post space of the first one. Grab that yarn and pull through. With this yarn securely through it. So it's just trapped underneath. So let's uh, begin. We're going to grow it bigger. So we have to fill in some space. So we're going to chain three. So one, two and three. So every time we're working across these rows this is what you're doing. You chain three and then three double crochets. See I want to keep these stragglers all together so that they get stuck underneath of this row as we carry along. So we're just going to double crochet three times. And I only do it for that point. Okay? So I'm going to let these stragglers fall out of the way and I'm going to trim those and I would leave those to the end of the project or the end of the square when I'm done. So now we're ready for this next section here. You see how my fingers automatically grab for that because I've been doing it a long time. So I'm just going to immediately just slip my hook through a post. Okay? Not a stitch or, or a chain. Just through the post. Pull through and let's grow it up again. So one, two and three. Okay? And then we're going to do three double crochets into that same gapping space. Okay, so we're going to just finish it off and now I want to, I only have one stripe at this point and this is all I want for there. 
because this is that singular. I'm trimming it and doing exactly what I did. I just pulled, oh sorry, I'm just gonna pull up through the loop first like this. It locks it and then I'm just going to just weave it in and out of the top of the, the, the stitch so that I get back to the, the middle of the or the inside of the of the of the top of this. <laughs> okay, so what I want to do is I don't want to grab my next yarn up and I just want to begin to do that next. So I'm going to begin my next yarn just like so and I'm just going to create a slip knot insert it onto my hook and let's begin again. So this is where I finished the yellow so make sure we turn it around so it's facing this way just like we did before and coming into the side into an actual chain so don't go into a gapping space or between the posts. Go right into the chain and just pull through and fasten on. So again we're going bigger so every time we go bigger you're chaining six. So one, two, three, pinch, one, two, and three. Okay, so that was four, five, six and then right where you're pinching is your first one. Okay, so you just work double crochet yourself back on the same chain working your way back to where you, you fastened on. So again, just like you did before, lay this down on top. That straggler is there. By the gap, just fold it up and come into the gapping space or the between the posts and pull through and through as a slip stitch. Then chain three, one, two, and three. Laying the, those stragglers down on top and making sure that they get stuck underneath those stitches and double crochet three times. Just like that. So then I'm going to leave those now. I only go one box over and then I leave those out of the way. I just fold it up, come into the next space here, pull through for a slip stitch, one, two, and three. And then double crochet three times. So I'm going to speed up a little bit. So I just come into the next one, again to the gapping space of the between the last post, and then one, two, and three. So the advantages is on this particular afghan is that when you have the, the three rows, it's actually, you got three rows without having to change color which speeds you up even faster, right? So once we have this, we're going to turn our work. We're not changing color at this point but we're beginning again and we're still getting bigger. So we're going to chain six. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six, and then right where you're pinching is your, your beginning one. Isn't that easy if you just pinch it? I got so sick and tired of counting back to the fourth. I just realized if I just pinch I don't have to really count. I can just do. Okay and we double crochet ourselves back along the chain and then once I get there I just want to fold it up and begin again across the row. So I'm going to fold it up and then just slip stitch between the last post and then one, two, and three and then double crochet three times into that same space. So essentially you have three double crochets that stand alone and then the fourth one that's created is basically holding your next group together. So that's uh, why it's really addictive. It's almost like granny squares but without the massive gaps in between your work and we simply just keep going across. So at the end of this line I'm going to show you how to start decreasing or actually I'm going to change it back to um, yellow and if pretend it's at the halfway point of a diamond square and there is one stripe right directly in the middle which is the fourth one in of the singles and you will notice that in the instructions of the, of, uh, the photography that I showed you as well and that represents it would be the halfway point. So we're going to do that in just a moment. So I'm going to change it back to yellow. So we're going to come to the end like so. So I come right to the end and then I'm going to fasten off. So there technically should be three of these rows before I fasten off just so that you're aware. So this is just really showing you how to do these uh, steps. The pattern is really self-explanatory once you get along. Once I did one I basically used it as a template and I just kept it handy uh, with the rest of my squares so that I could actually just follow along. And let's begin to do with our yellow. So let's pretend we're at the halfway point. I'm using my yellow just fastening it, putting it onto my hook and again just like I did before. So the yellow in the middle is the final one of growing. So let's uh, begin. So we insert in and we chain and we fasten in 
and then we chain six. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six, and that's where I start, right where I pinched. So this is just like what you already know, you just start working your way back on that chain. There will be a total of three double crochets before you get back to the, to where you fastened on. Okay, and now you have your fastening on string and your tucked in one. Make sure that you get everything in there, go into the, to the post area in between and just pull everything, slip stitch it and then one, two and three. Again, making sure that the stragglers are down and put three double crochets in there. This yarn is so soft, I wish you could feel it. It's a really quite amazing. So now I just do that and then I put the stragglers aside and I just continue to work my way across. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna meet you back up in just a moment and then we're gonna start decreasing and I'll show you how to do that. And the decrease is equal on both sides. So if you wanted to do a square, you continue to increase on one side and decrease on the other. But in this case, we are doing an equal square. So we're gonna be decreasing at the same time on both sides. Okay, I'm getting all the way to the end and I'm putting in my three double crochets in the final box. Remember we're still growing so it just, we have to make sure we still add it to there. And once we get beyond this, we're no longer gonna be doing that. So let's uh, fasten off that yellow at this time. And we're going to be starting off with pink when we come back. And again, I wanna fasten this off properly and just making sure I weave in my ends. Because now, the trick to decreasing is knowing how to do it. There's some people that get really upset is that they don't actually make equal squares because they don't realize they're not decreasing at the exact same time on both sides. So the trick to it is that once we begin to decrease is that the next squares will appear here and here and going all the way across. So we're no longer growing it on these yellow but we're gonna stick here and just work our way backwards. So let's uh, begin to do that next. So this is where I finished off. Let me turn it, grab my pink and I'll be right back. Okay, I got my pink and now it's time to decrease and we're gonna do that. We're just gonna slip it on. So normally we've been going on the outside when we've been doing this because we've been increasing. But now we're going to be increasing. So look at it from an angle point of view we're, and see where the, my fingers are pointing. That's the direction we're gonna go into. So if I increase it on the outside, it's gonna go in the wrong direction. So then this time what I want to do is that I want to join it in here. So I don't wanna join it into a gapping space. I wanna make sure that I come into a chain to fasten on my yarn. Okay, and, and so let's fasten on. So you're fastening on on the inside of the box. So when you're decreasing, you don't have to do that chaining of six anymore. You can completely stop that. So you fasten on, so you're just gonna go one, two, and three. Okay, and now here is the gap, that last post right here. So just put down your stragglers and just double crochet into that side of that post. So when you're decreasing, you don't have to worry about increasing anymore. So it just gets faster and faster because there's actually less hoops to jump through. So you did the first one, dra drag these over, okay? So just pull those over and just fasten it to the next one. So there's the next gap, put them around. Okay, and do that for at least two boxes. So one, two, three, stragglers are in. Okay. And we're just double crocheting as normal and then once I get those into two boxes, I just simply, I just trim off what's left and again, we just come into the next piece over here. So it's just like what you already know, it's just how you stop and start um, when you're decreasing. So we're putting in three double crochets. Okay, turn, or sorry, not turn. It, you're slip stitching it and then one, two, three. Okay, so the trick is to knowing where to stop. So I have this box but I got another one left. When I started this and when I normally do corner to corner, right when I start decreasing, I always forget and then I go using one box too far. So just be very conscientious of that. Okay, so I got my three in, slip stitch. And if you look at it, you still have one more box to go because there's a gapping space. So one, two, and three. And the trick is, is how you stop and how you restart the next round, the next row. So I got my last box in here, so I just come around the gapping space 
and in. So now you can see, now it's very kind of confusing at this point because of the way things are pulling but once I take the tension off you will notice that you have a flat side going on this side and now it's already flat here. So what we want to just do is turn your work and we want to slip stitch three over. So just slip stitch three over and this will take you to the beginning of the next round. Okay, so we can't start here because then you'll start growing and then you'll forget about this box. So we're just continuing to get narrower and narrower. So to start up again, just like you did before, it's chain three. Coming into the side, we don't have to worry about changing colors at this point, so it's just very simple. So with this kind of design, yes, you're changing more colors, but you can't have everything. You can't have the same look if you don't go through the process. So every time you just chain three I love the decreasing and I think everybody loves the decreasing because basically every time you go through a row when you're in the decrease you get rid of um, and you're decreasing on both sides you get rid of actually a box on both sides so there's basically two less boxes per row every time you decrease. So you just have to pay attention to when you come across Okay, so this is my final box. You can kind of see it there right when we're doing it. And on the other side of this one I had um, two um, rows of this uh, other color. So I'm only going to stick with two rows and I'm going to change the color back to um, the regular yellow stripe. So if I'm changing color what I would do at this point is I would stop right here and I would trim my yarn. like so and just pull up and then just weave it into the top here to bring yourself to this corner. When you do that basically you're putting the yarn in line with the next color so that you can clearly bury it into position as you're going across and it's a great way to hide in your loose ends. So I'm going to turn my work and get ready and you can see now the square is really starting to take effect even though it's a miniature. You can do this kind of thing with even miniatures. It's up to you. Your creativity is up to you really at the end of the day. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the slip knot again onto the hook and so essentially you're basically repeating exactly. So if you're doing everything right you will only have three yellow boxes here, two and then one. So essentially where am I going to start? I'm going to start off the tip here and this is where that one last one was finished off. Let's fasten on the yarn and then one, two and three and then to the side again. So the three double crochets. So we're just getting narrower so we don't worry about that chaining of six anymore, right? Becomes very simple. So we looked on the other side. If it's a mirror then that means that there's only going to be three boxes this side. Again drag this straggler, trap it into position. One, two and three. Okay and then fasten or slip stitch chain three and then double crochet three more times. Now I know just from speaking to you that I have three boxes but I can clearly see that I only have three anyway. So you can just uh, attach it like so and now that's the end of the yellow already. Trim. Okay we're going to fasten that. Weave in our ends. So anything that's sticking out of these when it comes to the ends and the way that I'm doing it at this particular moment is that you can safely trim and not worry about your afghan falling apart. Okay so let's turn your work. So you can clearly see I only have two boxes left. I have two gapping spaces. So let's um, this is that white color again one more time. So the final what we have is we have the yarn coming in slip knot and again we're getting smaller therefore we come to the inside here. Okay make sure the stragglers are in the way. Fasten on okay and then one, two and three. So if you go into the gapping space, I never said this but um, I didn't tell you to do it anyway but if you do what happens is it, it makes your um, sides look uneven and it looks really um, quite godly or gaudy actually and it's really quite terrible. So don't do that and once you get that in just slip stitch and then one, two, three and 
double crochet three times. Okay, slip stitch. And we're gonna do two colors of that because we did two colors or two rows of the white. So we're doing the same on the other side. Turn the work and we're going to slip stitch or wave three times across and coming into the top of the last stitch. Don't go into the gapping space and then one, two and three and then three double crochets. As we start the next row, this is only one box in here so once we get this done, you're done. Okay and once we get that, we're just gonna slip stitch and this is actually in fact the corner but the corner when you finish it off is actually gonna be on the side which confuses people as well. So I'm just gonna trim it and all I just go, I'm going to do at this point is that I'm just going to weave in and put it to the corner. If you weave in your work you know you don't have to worry about it afterward. There's, when I first started crocheting when I was uh, pretty young I would not leave enough and I would not weave in my ends and I would have my afghans fall apart on me. So you know take the extra time and essentially you have your corner to corner square just like so and this is a miniature version of what we're working on. So anything hanging out at this point just pull on it just make sure it's nice and snug and all you can just do is then at this point is just safely trim them out as you're working your way across. You will notice that the stragglers mostly appear on one side versus the other. It depends on your on where you started and stopped as you went along. Just pull on things, make sure everything's balanced. Okay, so everything is good. Everything is always going to be in groups of two if you did it right. So it's just a matter of cutting two strings at one time. And right when we started, we never weave those in. So we're just going to weave a bit of that in before I start trimming. And when you go to whip stitch these together, that will finalize those permanently into position at the same time. So you don't really need to worry about it as well. And it will never fall apart anyway from the bottom end. But as long as you don't cut that string too short. So in keeping with the concept of the baby diamonds, you're going to attach all of your squares together before doing the border. But the border is absolutely identical to the way that you would do a regular border for a corner to corner afghan. So just visualize that you have all the squares all whip stitched together all down using a thin piece of thread in order to make it match and because this is fluffy yarn it actually really hides really well. So let's uh, begin to explore how to do the border next. Okay let's begin. We're just going to choose a color that's easy for you that you would like to use and I'm going to use pink just because I can. So we're going to look at any corner. It doesn't matter which one you have even for the baby diamonds uh, afghan that has nine squares. You just have to pick the main corner of, the, of, it, of it all. So you have to assemble it all together and then start doing your border. Let's uh, create a slip knot and put it onto your hook. And we're going to insert into a corner piece and we want to go not into a space but we actually want to go right into uh, an actual stitch or chain and we're going to fasten it on. Okay and so we're going to chain one first okay and then chain another one so two and then we're going to single crochet back into that same space. So this is how easy it's going to go. The straggler I'm going to leave on top of the line because you'll see it, comes, it, comes, it kind of blends in. So we just single crochet. So this is how easy it is. You're going to chain two and we're going to come in between two blocks. You can see that this is the gap space between the two. So block one, block two, block three, block four. You're going to play and single crochet in between the blocks and then chain two. Okay, so just look for the next block. You can see the colors. Even if you have the same colors, you will see, still see the blocking formation and then chain two. So this whole revolution, what we're doing is that we're creating the foundation of your border so that it looks consistent each and every time. And uh, you can clearly see, I could see the difference between block one and two even though it was the same color. So once you get to the corner, the next corner, so one and two, what you're going to do is just go right into a corner. So not into a gapping space but right into an actual chain. Okay, single crochet, chain two and single crochet back into the same stitch. So turn your project just like so and then chain two and then again in between the next block 
formations and do that all the way around for the entire revolution and you'll notice that this will look amazing once you get further on into this project. So continue to do this same concept all the way around. I'll meet you back up in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way back around. I'm chaining my two and then because of the way that I started here you're just going to slip stitch to the beginning chain that you started off with and now we're going to begin the next re revolution. So we just have to sli uh, slip stitch um, to the next first one first. So we're just going to slip stitch to the middle and then chain two or chain three sorry. Okay so I slip stitch to this gapping space right in the center and now we're just going to put two more double crochets into that same gap. So you, the chaining of three counts as one so you technically have three and the reason why I mentioned that is that every one of these chain two gapping spaces now are going to get three double crochets each. So you're really keeping with the look of the of the corner to corner. So once you get your three in there just immediately jump to the next one. So you can see that the first border going all the way around is pretty painless. And actually it was a lot more simpler than I ever expected it would be. And then we simply come in to each one putting in three double crochets. Okay so let me uh, get this done and I'll meet you at the first corner and I'll show you what to do there. Okay I'm almost at the first corner. I'm just on my last box. Okay and then once you get to that corner you'll have your your piece right there and that's going to be three double crochets into that corner. Just like that. And then we immediately just turn our work and just immediately jump to this next one that the next uh, chain two gap and just put in three double crochets. So the corners are really painless just very easy and continue to do that all the way around. Meet you back up in just a moment and this is row uh, round number two of four. So I'm coming all the way back around and I've done my last box here or the last gapping space. When I started off I did my three right into the next space so we're just going to slip stitch to bring it to a conclusion. So we're in the, the middle, we're in the first of three on the edge. So what we have to do first is that we have to slip stitch one over to put us back into the center of the corner and then we just simply chain three. And we're going to put two more double crochets into that same gapping space. So this round is relatively easy as well. Well they're all easy really. And you're going to just double crochet each um, stitch as you go all the way around. Now when you get to the first corner and I'm just going to tell you instead of showing you that you're going to have your first corner the third stitch in or sorry the second stitch in the middle one of the three is going to get three double crochets and then you just continue to double crochet into each one. So just remember in the corner the middle one always gets three on this particular round. So I'll meet you back up in just a sec at the end of this round and then we just have one more to go to finalize this project off. Okay I'm coming all the way back around and make sure I get my last one in there and then we're just going to slip stitch to bring this around to conclusion. So slip stitch it to the top. Now we just have one more final revolution. Very easy. We're just going to chain one single crochet to the same spot that you just did that join and then just single crochet into each double crochet all the way around. Corners you don't need to worry about just one single crochet into every stitch going all the way around and that's how you would do a complete border with doing these corner to corner afghans regardless if it's the baby diamonds or just a standard uh, corner to corner afghan. So when you get all the way around just simply just slip stitch to, uh, to the first one and then just have to weave in your ends and this is how you would do a border for corner to corner afghan project and choosing the border is actually really important but you know what this is a great uh, concept and you can do whatever makes you happy. Until so a day later I stayed up real late last night finished up my afghan complete with the border and this is absolutely amazing. It is so exceptionally soft and I'm really really happy with this particular design and I love the corner to corner but I like how it looks different as well. By the way if you're looking for the cute giraffe we also have a video tutorial available on him. He's called My Toy Giraffe. It's a free pattern available on Red Heart. Dot com. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of James C. Brett as well as the Crochet Crowd.com. We'll see you.